Welcome to Zcash Explained. Today's episode, Zcash Shielded Transactions. In it, we cover Y0 Knowledge, ZK Snarks, Zcash Shielded Transactions, the Shielded Pools in Zcash, and we're going to have a quick demo. Recall from a previous video in which we described the Bitcoin transparent model, in which unspent uh, outputs are consumed as inputs in new transactions. Another way of illustrating this concept is a transparent bowl, in which every time a coin is removed, a coin of the same value is put into the bowl. Therefore, everyone can view and validate that no value has been double spent. In that video, we also discussed how this design means that Bitcoin's fungibility, and therefore the permissionless nature of the network, is incredibly fragile. So the question, why zero knowledge? It presents a solution to the eroding fungibility problem due to analytic services and AI now available to the general public. Zero Knowledge also provides robust privacy by avoiding significant data leakage problems that several decoy-based systems such as Monero are known for. Zcash's latest proof system, Halo, is upgradable, meaning other projects that have built on top of Halo can share their advancements with Zcash, and vice versa. This is all without the need for any kind of trusted setup ceremony. Um, these decoy-based approaches just don't work, right? And in general, we need to get better at evaluating these things. We need to like avoid having people do privacy theater. The concept of decoys is what you instinctively go to and it can't work. And I can show you why by thinking about information leakage instead of thinking about privacy. What is a proof? Proofs are the basis for all mathematics, a proof is a claim or theorem you're trying to prove, and a sequence of derivations made to declare the theorem has been proven. So the sequence is, a prover makes a claim to a verifier who can then accept or reject it. This is a classic example for zero-knowledge proving. In our scenario, we have a prover inside the cave and a verifier standing outside. The prover wishes to show the verifier that they hold the secret or a key to open a gate in the middle of this cave without actually showing the verifier this key. So our verifier allows the prover to enter the cave using the A or B passage, but at random the verifier will select the exit path if it's A or B. So our prover exits from the A passage in our example and our verifier is convinced, but because this was a randomly selected exit path, the chance is 50-50 and our prover may have been lucky. So if we repeat this experiment millions of times, um, the probability of a cheating prover would be vanishingly small. This scenario is actually an example of an interactive proof, as there were multiple rounds of messages between the prover and the verifier. In general, zero-knowledge proofs must satisfy three main properties. Completeness, if the statement is true, an honest verifier will be convinced of this fact by an honest prover. Soundness, if the statement is false, no cheating prover can convince an honest verifier that it's true, except with some small probability. And zero knowledge, if the statement is true, no verifier learns anything other than the fact that the statement is true. Succinct, non-interactive arguments of knowledge. They're a type of zero-knowledge proof system that can be applied to general-purpose applications. In the case of Zcash, this application is a private and permissionless peer-to-peer -peer payment system. We'll focus on three main components of SNARKs. Polynomials are mathematical expressions that consist of variables, coefficients, and exponents. They are fundamental objects in algebra and are widely used to represent mathematical functions and relationships between variables. If you're interested to learn about the circuit and polynomials that are used in the Halo 2 proof system, I'll leave a link to the Halo 2 book in the description. Arithmetic circuits. The computation to be proved is described as an arithmetic circuit. It consists of various gates and wires which represent the operations and data dependencies. Each wire in the circuit is associated with a polynomial. There are different types of circuit that can be used for an application, each having its unique properties and verification time. Snarks are non-interactive, so we don't have to go through the several rounds of messages from our example in the cave. Instead, one proof is submitted. Using homomorphically hidden verifier challenges, a verifier is able to check at random points if the polynomial commitment is valid. 
This makes it much less expensive for the network. You can read the ZKP and ZK Snarks wiki to find out more about polynomial interactive oracle proofs. It's uh, in the description. Shielded transactions occur between shielded addresses. Zcash is sent between shielded addresses using a QR code in the same way as Bitcoin, Ethereum, Monero, and Litecoin. As part of the Zero to Zero Knowledge series, we created a Twitter thread, and it explains how a seed phrase is generated and how that eventually becomes a Zcash address inside your wallet. Highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the description. In an earlier video, we explained how the inputs and outputs in Bitcoin transactions forms a Merkle tree. Zcash instead uses a note commitment tree, which stores the encrypted notes generated with transactions. Notes store the value that is transferred between users, and this is known as inbound secret distribution. If the notes are encrypted, and it's the only thing that's published to the blockchain, how does my wallet know when the funds are sent to me? We introduce the concept of trial decryption, in which the wallet scans the blockchain, and as it does so, it's pulling in the notes and it's using its incoming viewing key or its full viewing key to find the ones that it can decrypt. This prevents full nodes and even like clients from knowing which notes belong to which users. It's one of the many strong security considerations the project makes alongside its use of zero knowledge. It's also partly why the Zcash implementation of this technology is one of the most well-documented, researched, and replicated. Zcash shielded transactions maintain sender and receiver privacy. Only the sender knows the receiver's payment address, and only the note commitment is included in the output description or, a or action description. So miners cannot know the address information and it cannot be queried in blockchain explorers. Diversified addresses are also used, which can generate new addresses for each sender. So how do we hide the amount? Instead of the real input and output, Zcash transactions use output descriptions and action descriptions, which contain a ZK proof that the value committed in the transaction can be signed for by the sender. Miners only need to verify that the input and output of the transactions are balanced through this zero knowledge proof without having to query the sender's balance and the transfer amount. Each full node maintains a nullifier set. As valid transactions containing spend transfers or action transfers are processed, the nullifiers revealed in spend descriptions and action descriptions are inserted into the nullifier set associated with the new tree state. Nullifiers are enforced to be unique within the blockchain this prevents double spend without revealing user balances. The binding signature proves that shielded inputs minus shielded outputs equals the transparent value change. So the amount between private transactions and transparent transactions must be balanced. L1 shielded transactions are immune to MEV or maximum extractable value that miners extract by rearranging transactions within the mempool for personal gain. It also avoids the problem of third-party analytic services eroding asset fungibility of ZEC within the network, as all units within the shielded pool are computationally indistinguishable. As a reminder, this is not the case with non-ZK privacy coins. Lastly, it serves to protect confidential business and personal financial information from nefarious groups or adversary nation states. In October of 2016, the Sprout Shielded Pool launched as the first ever permissionless zero knowledge privacy protocol. Essentially, it was Zcash 1.0. The Radiolab podcast about the ceremony is very entertaining. A detail not publicised at the time is the fact that Edward Snowden was actually one of six people trusted with faithfully creating a secure network that would benefit the world. As the Zcash ecosystem continued to expand with increasing number of shielded transactions, it was observed that the Sprout pool had limited efficiency, particularly with regard to the time needed to generate transactions and its fixed payment addresses. There is ZEC still in the Sprout pool and it's steadily leaving and entering the newer Sapling and Orchard pools. 
The sapling pool, which launched in 2018, brought with it more breakthrough technology, diversified payment addresses, and the introduction of outgoing viewing keys and full viewing keys. The spend and output information now being separated and signed separately. For the first time ever, shielded transactions were possible on mobile devices. The KSNARC and elliptic curve improvements alone. And on top of that, we get an additional, probably closer to like 20 or 30 times, depending on what you're doing, improvement in performance uh, in general. So what would take maybe 40 seconds on my computer, two and a half or three seconds instead, is actually makes it possible for us to put shielded transactions on mobile phones and perhaps uh, other things like that. So yeah, very <laughs> crucial. Trustless ZK Snarks and the Orchard Shielded Pool were made possible thanks to the scientific breakthrough made by Sean Bow and the ECC engineers. Halo was implemented in the NU5 network upgrade in 2022. This removed the drawback in having to conduct any trusted setup ceremony. Alongside this security improvement was the activation of unified addresses. This combines the sapling and transparent address types with Orchard into one easy to use address type. The advantage of this being that exchanges and merchants being able to facilitate shielded withdrawals and deposits a lot easier. First, we can make a public or transparent transaction, also known as a T2T transaction. Just like Bitcoin, the amounts and address details of the sender and recipients are stored on chain. Next we have a shielding transaction. Here we can see funds from a transparent address being sent to a shielded address. You can send funds from the transparent pool to either the sapling or orchard pool. This is how it looks on a block explorer. Note, you can view the source and amount of funds, but no address details about the recipient are visible. Finally, we have a fully shielded transaction. Neither the sender or recipient address information or the amount of funds being transferred is visible. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Next, we're going to take a look at the Namada Zcash Bridge.